Hello and welcome to a new ostrich video and today I want to talk about the weather radar and now we will take our PMDG 737 as an example but the usage of the weather radar is pretty much the same on the 747 and also the 777 and the basic principle of a weather radar is true for any aircraft that is equipped with such a device. So the weather radar is usually situated in the nose of the aircraft as you can see on the 737-500 and it scans the air from left to right and back and it also can be tilted up and down as you need it. Now a misconception that some people have is that the weather radar detects clouds and that's not correct and it wouldn't be useful for the pilot as the pilot doesn't need to know where the clouds are and we want to give him or her only relevant information. The weather radar detects water in the air and therefore it can show us precipitation and you might argue that a cloud is nothing more than a collection of billions and billions of tiny water droplets in the air and you are correct but a fair weather cloud these droplets are too small to show up on the radar and so we see only the clouds with heavy precipitation in it like a thunderstorm for example and these are the type of clouds we want to avoid. Now if we have a low density of water in the air like light rain or drizzle it shows up as green if we have a higher density it shows up as yellow and if you have really heavy precipitations, really heavy droplets, like we would find in a thunderstorm, for example, it would show up as red. But that doesn't necessarily mean that red means avoid these areas and green you are good to go. Water reflects the uh, radar beams quite well and so the radar can detect rain. But Ice itself is not as reflective as liquid water, so try hail for example. Precipitation form we surely should avoid may show up only as yellow or green depending on the tent. Also if we are encountering a thunderstorm at cruise level on the radar, depending on the tilt of the radar itself, it may only scan the top of the thunderstorm cloud and in this altitude it is more as likely that the precipitation up so high is frozen and therefore doesn't reflect as good and therefore maybe show up as green or yellow. So you see the weather radar doesn't replace your knowledge of mythology and it also doesn't uh, replace a fair weather briefing. You should know that a thunderstorm cell looks like this and if your weather briefing says you have to expect thunderstorms in the vicinity you have to know uh, what to look out for and you also have to know where weather phenomena like hail for example can be expected. So you see you need all the three tools and this is really important because you can brief where thunderstorms are expected that that information is a forecast and forecasts are never completely accurate and also if you are on the air this briefing is maybe two hours ago so you only know that you have to expect thunderstorm cells but these cells are usually small and they move quite quickly so you don't know exactly or where it is and therefore your gravel radar comes in hand because then you can scan for it and find a way to fly around it and so it helps you to keep your situational awareness always on top. So now after the theory it's now a good question how to use this, which buttons we have and how we can use it. So let's join me on the flight deck and now we are on approach to take an SUC out of the window. The weather isn't that nice. So but you see nothing on the weather radar because at the moment this function isn't enabled. To enable the weather radar on your navigation display to have, you have to go to your EFIS panel and select VXR and then it takes a time and with this weather conditions you probably see something coming up. You see some uh, weather cells here, you see a big cell over here. Now it's a little bit better to see and this is a really typical 
a storm cell directly on our approach so in this case you may consider to go in a hold wait till it's clear or uh, maybe to the world but this is really nice because it's a very good example of what the bubble radar shows you so and you also have all the information of the bubble radar setting you see at the moment at, it is at vx plus t t means turbulence and the areas of the turbulence are marked as this magenta while the normal bubble is marked in green red and yellow and you see the angle, the tilt of the radar is currently at zero degrees and A, that it's in automatic mode. But what if you want to switch the settings? So the panel for the radar is in the center pedestal, right in the center, and let's take a closer look. And you have basically a few buttons only. You have a test function, you have the auto button, was at the moment engaged and then you have similar buttons on the top or on the corner the one is for the captain side and the other one is for the first officer side so at the moment we are on auto but we can disengage this and you see now it says M for manual and if we want to inspect this cloud maybe higher up or lower down we now can change the angle uh, with this Right, for example, two degrees down or two degrees up, and you always have to wait a little bit so that the radar has the option to refresh itself. Very nice, we can set it to zero again. And then the other twist knob you have here is the gain. The gain is nothing more than the sensitivity of your display, so how much water gets displayed in colors so if you pump it up for example you see now as it's refreshed the rubber radar shows a lot more information and as you mess uh, with this setting it tells you wow that you have variated this so now to the buttons you have the first one is a tfr button and that only means it can share the settings you have on your side to uh, the other side so for example from the captain side to the first officer side so that it's sure they all have the same picture they're looking at and finding the decision in this case the decision of maybe developing uh, to another airport and this contains all settings so all settings are just if you have weather or weather plus turbulence and the gain because the tool is always the same as you only have one radar uh, vision front then you have two buttons one is called vx and one is called vx plus t at the moment we have vx plus t selected so this shows you the turbulence in mangenta and if you don't uh, want this or don't need this information you can go to vx that is vava only and you see after a while it refreshes and now it shows you only the precipitation levels and this beautiful storm cell in here. Now the other buttons we have, uh, the map function is there to overlay the weather information with the terrain information, what is uh, not modeled in the simulation and TG, this is the decluttering if you have the weather information and the terrain information overlaid and this isn't modeled as well. And actually that's basically all uh, that is uh, true with the weather radar, just a few buttons, just a few functions and basically they are to give you a good situational awareness about where this fast uh, moving cells are and how you can fly around it and not, as we are going to do now, directly into it. So let's have a look and here you see the big thunderstorm cloud directly in front of us so that was it about this short video i hope you enjoyed it and if you have questions or comments as always let me know it down in the comments below do the usual youtube uh, things subscribe like share etc and then all that's left to say now is thanks for watching and see you at the next time bye bye